going to zoom out. <clears throat> okay. Zoomed out. Okay, guys. Hey, guys. Hey. It is your girl. It's another day. Of course it is. You know, of course. But I'm back. Hello. So I woke up this morning. I came downstairs, made my court made my coffee excuse me what time is it it's still morning but it's about to be afternoon so i'm having my coffee my coffee why can't i talk i'm having my coffee this morning and um i've already taken like my supplements i took my multivitamin this morning i took um a b vitamin and I also took a cranberry pill. And I drank a cup of water and I'm having the coffee now. I made a huge mistake last week of eating an ice cream sandwich. And then yesterday I went and I got some um, caramel macchiato um, creamer and I use that in my coffee, not realizing that it had cow's milk in it and so my stomach is going through a thing right now and so today I'm really gonna need to detox myself because as you guys know I've been off of you know the animal products for some time now and um, you know besides like the butters which my body can uh, digest and um, cheese which my body does okay with that yes so I was supposed to come back on here um, yesterday. I was supposed to come back on and do like a sit down video to kind of talk to you guys about what's up with this surgery. So when I left the office, I, I took my folder, my initial folder with me, but they gave me a new folder. You know, it's always like they assume that the patient's not going to be prepared. And you know me, I'm all about trying to save the environment. So I don't like wasting paper and things, but you know, so this was my consultation folder that they had given me, which I kept all of my paperwork in here, like my um, initial uh, handout with my scheduling information and my quote. And then I also had to get a mammography. So I also had my paperwork from the imaging center uh, with the results of my mammography. I kept that in here. So, you know, for easy access and things. And so uh, in this folder uh, that they gave me, um, it's chock full of nuts. You know what I'm saying? Has everything in here. So this is what I'm going to be talking about with you guys quickly today. So, yes. Let me get a sip of my coffee and then we'll get started. So, by way of next steps, the next thing that I have on my agenda is to go and get a COVID test. So, well actually no. So first things first, when I left that appointment, um, I was given a prescription for my pain medication. She did ask me if I preferred Percocet over Vicodin. Uh, she would prescribe, you know, based on my preference. Um, I'm not really a pain medication girl, so I told her I had no preference. She prescribed me Percocet. And so she uh, recommended that I take that prescription to the pharmacy ASAP. Um, because if you don't know, with uh, pain medications, any type of opioid drugs, uh, which... Uh, could be like addictive things like that uh, control type substances um, those prescriptions have a lifespan on them I think that you have to get them filled within 30 days and you can't refill them before 30 days so um, because you know those prescriptions are you know very very um, you know they're monitored very uh, closely by you know uh, pharmaceutical companies health insurance companies the government all that you know it's a big to do with opioids and things like that because you know people can easily become addicted to those types of drugs and so 
you know, we want to be as safe as possible. So, you know, I don't do PSAs on this channel, but if you are someone um, out there who is, you know, getting like dental procedures, plastic surgery, you know, back surgeries, knee surgeries, any type of procedures that you're getting, but even more so for, for us, um, more healthier individuals who are getting these elective type procedures done where we have to rely on pain medications for a short window of time. You know, we have to be responsible with that medication, which means that when we're done taking it, we need to uh, do the right thing, which is to dispose of it properly. And most police stations do have like a drop off. They ha it looks like a mailbox, essentially. Um, if you go into your local police station, you can dispose of those drugs right there once you're done with them. They may even have it at like a fire station also, but you know, it's very important to be responsible with those types of drugs because it is very, very dangerous to have it in your home um, where people could gain access to it, you know. So yeah, that's my PSA regarding the pain med. So just make sure that if you are someone who <clears throat> has been prescribed uh, pain medication that you have a responsibility to uh, ensure that you are uh, protecting that pain medication and keeping it out of ha the hands of, you know, children and um, people who have addictions, you know. So just be sure, you know, it's very important. So that is what I plan to do. So I know that I'm not going to be um, taking that medication for a full 30 days. Uh, so once I'm off of it, I know that my local police station has a drop off for uh, prescription drugs. And so that's what I'll be doing. Okay, next up, the next thing on my agenda by way of, you know, patient task, things that I need to do um, leading up to my surgery is I need to um, get my COVID test. So the COVID test needs to be done six days before my procedure. Lighting, sun shifted. Apologize for that. Uh, so yes, I have to get my COVID test done. So they've given me um, all information about um, getting my COVID test. I have to get that test done by uh, May 14th because it has to be done at least six days prior to the surgery. Um, as soon as I left that appointment, I um, sat in the car and scheduled an appointment for the COVID test. So um, that's already set and ready to go. So I'll be going at 7 a.m early morning uh, on May 14th to get my COVID test done. Uh, the next thing um, is that I had to sign a post-procedure discharge consent um, that just basically says that I, the patient, agreed to set up a post-surgical uh, care plan, which means that I have, uh, have an arrangement for someone to come and pick me up and see me home. Um, patients will not be released to a Lyft or an Uber. So, you know, I initially thought in my mind that I would be okay um, to ride home in a Lyft or an Uber. Um, that's what I thought, but you know, the nurse let me know that that's no bueno. So for those of you who may or may not know, my husband doesn't drive. And so he had intended to come in an Uber, pick me up and we get an Uber back. Um, but I'm going to have to make other arrangements for that because I did sign a consent with regards to that. So, um, <clears throat> there's just some other documentation around COVID, you know, because we are in a pandemic. So they did, you know, just give me, um, information about the safety, um, precautions that their office takes around COVID-19. Um, then they also gave me my patient bill of rights. Uh, which all doctors should be giving you that. And then uh, they also give you um, patient responsibilities, which I think is good as well. Um, because there are a lot of things that, you know, once you put on your patient hat, there are a lot of things that you as a patient don't understand around your responsibilities a lot of times we always want to place the onus and responsibility on the provider or the or the or the physician or the surgeon or whatever you want to call it 
when in fact as a patient you do have some responsibilities um one of them is asking questions if you're not sure about something or you're unclear making sure you have good clarity before you go into um, a surgical suite to be operated on you know what i'm saying so um there's just a lot of things that people they don't ask a lot of questions or the questions that they do ask um really aren't even pertinent or valid to what's most important which is their healing um post-op care um and all that so very important so i like the fact that they do give you a lot of reading materials um you know a lot of this reading will take me right up to you know me getting my surgery so that's good um the other thing that they did give me is they did give me a patient uh post-operative um, i'm sorry pre-operative um skin preparation wipe so there's two really large body wipes in here um, to prep the skin for surgery i had actually bought like an antibacterial wash or soap um i purchased it on amazon like as soon as i scheduled my surgery because i knew you know that i would have to do that i mean the, when i got uh, gastric sleeve surgery they just told me to wash up with like a dial or safeguard antibacterial soap which i did but for this procedure they actually did give me the wipe and i did see other um other women who've had procedures similar to mine uh, say that their surgeons also gave them this wipe. So there's two, two wipes. One I'm going to use um, the night before and then the other one I'm going to use the morning of. So I'm glad that, you know, they did supply me with that. Um, and then they also provided me with instructions on how to prep my skin uh, for the procedure. So uh, one of the things that they um, did, did say is that I am not to put on any type of lotions, deodorants, or moisturizers. Um, you know, which is, you know, pretty much it should be common sense, but for some it's not. I mean, you don't want those things contaminating your body or you know contaminate if they're opening you up you don't want any of those chemicals and things getting into your body so you don't need to wear that stuff it's, it's just not necessary so they did give me that so i did read that to make sure that i have a full understanding of what my responsibility is the day of surgery okay and then they also gave me a picture of the surgical uh or post-operative bra that I need to bring with me on the day of surgery so they told me I can just you know order this straight from Amazon which I did um, I'll put a link to the bras that I picked up but I actually um, picked up four of them uh, because I do expect to you know change out of them and just just one or two which is not enough for me I like to be able to have you know clean garments on hand so i may even be ordering more but my initial purchase i purchased four of them and i purchased them in black gray and i think a pink one came in the mix um, but i'm more of a neutral girl so and i don't want to see blood stained garments and i know that there will be some bleeding and drainage happening so um i did opt to get the darker colors um just personal preference but yes this is the picture of the post-surgical bra that they told me I needed to get and I'll be taking that with me date of surgery and then otherwise they also gave me just some breast reduction uh, pre uh, traditional pre-operative uh, instructions uh, for anyone getting a breast reduction now again I'm not getting a breast reduction I'm getting a breast lift but similar to a reduction they are going to be removing skin um so i guess that you know the traditional pre-operative uh and you know, the traditional excuse me the traditional pre-operative instructions say that three times fast are probably going to be the same across these types of procedures so the ones that they highlighted here for me are is um is that i is that I will need a ride to and from the, fac the facility because they will not release me um, to, you know, an Uber driver. Um, they told me to, they're saying to make sure that you remove all jewelry, piercings, and contacts prior to arrival. So I do have this uh, bracelet that only comes off with a key, so I'll make sure that I remove that beforehand. And what they also um, indicated is that if I'm not able to have a friend accompany me and pick me up, 
that they did have like a nurse uh, a nurse that could come like for an additional charge I can get like nursing care um, afterwards um, they do advise to wear comfortable clothing the day of surgery that kind of goes without saying but you know I'm not gonna go there in a waist trainer or a faja like that's not happening so they do say that you need to wear comfortable clothes and preferably a top that buttons or zips in the front so for that I did purchase just like I purchased two hoodies that zip in the front um, but depending on what the weather is I may actually look to purchase some like loungewear that kind of looks good enough to wear outside I'll probably do that so if I do I'll, I'll keep you guys posted and I'll let you see what I get but I do have a zip two zip up hoodies that I can wear um, they also say that uh, you know they, they talk about the sports bra that you need to purchase um, if you need to have lab work done they want all that to be done at least two weeks prior for lab work they need all of that stuff in at least two weeks prior to the surgery I didn't have to get any lab work um, because I'm fairly healthy uh, the next thing is uh, if you do take medications like blood pressure meds things like that things that you have to take um, they tell you to take it in the morning <clears throat> day of surgery with just a sip of water no aspirin and no herbal supplements at least two weeks prior to the surgery so none of that no alcohol at least 48 hours prior to surgery so I for me I am going to cut cut it off effective May 1st so at least 20 days prior to my surgery I will be cutting off all forms of alcohol like I'm done with it um, no smoking prior to surgery and then of course if I develop a fever or any type of respiratory illness they want you to call the office you know of course that's just like you know a common sense type of thing um, so now as far as my post-operative care I don't know if I should do a separate video for this um, but as far as my post-operative care instructions um, they do recommend that someone stays with you for 24 hours after the surgery I'm married I, my husband will be here with me and you know he's gonna take care of me um, there are no diet restrictions after most surgeries. So for me guys, um, because I am plant-based, it's very, very important to me to make sure that I'm getting enough protein. And uh, also for me, it is very important for me to get my protein from real food. Uh, so for me, while there are no like dietary restrictions, I will be building um, a protein-rich plant-based protein rich diet just to ensure that my body heals and I get back to normal I mean the good thing about this at least for me and what gives me comfort is the fact that although my breasts are are saggy um, I don't have what I think are very large breasts and so I think I have pretty average size breast um, I was wearing like a 36 C D like when I was very full um, when my breasts were very full with fat I probably wore about a 36 38 D cup and then when I lost weight um, my back shrunk down to like a 34 and I was wearing like a 34 C um, but like my skin was just spilling out of it like every time I moved or whatever it's just like the skin wouldn't stay there so I'm assuming that my breast would be fairly on the smaller end once he removes the skin and all that so um, what gives me a, a bit of relief is that I won't be large busted healing from this procedure I would be smaller busted I think so I'm thinking that the smaller breast give me an advantage I don't know how true that is but that's what I'm thinking in my mind Okay, so um, they do say that patients may eat a light meal the evening after surgery and maintain adequate fluid intake. So, no problem. Um, they're saying that more than likely you won't be hungry after surgery. So, that's a good thing. I don't need to eat that much anyway. Um, they do say that you're not to shower until after your post-operative visit uh, the following day after surgery. Okay, so that's no problem because... Um, 
you know, the only thing is that I'll probably be sweaty, but you know, that's no problem. I can do that. Strenuous activities must be avoided for three weeks after surgery. Um, no lifting or doing any of that stuff. So we got that. And then um, they do say that I will need to wear uh, long-term bra support to prevent the skin from stretching again. Which, of course, that goes without saying. I mean, you know, there's not going to be many times that I'm going to be going outside without a bra on. Like, even though my, my, my breasts are going to be more perky, I still intend to wear a bra. Like, seriously, come on. Like, you got to do it. Um, they do tell you to continue to avoid aspirin products, which is no problem. And if you smoke, stop smoking. And that's basically it for, you know, the post-operative thing. Um, so yeah, I cannot tell you guys how excited I am, you know, to be on this journey. You know, I... I didn't really... I, I, I can honestly say that I didn't really feel that my breasts were um, really a problem for me until until here recently. I mean, yes, there were times when I couldn't wear certain things because of my breast or whatever the case. But, you know, here recently when I just looked at I don't know if it could be because I'm, you know, I'm getting older in age and maybe it's just that because I'm going towards 45 then maybe there was just a drastic droop but I just started to notice that there was just a significant drooping happening that I didn't really notice before and it didn't really bother me and so I am just so elated blessed happy excited thrilled that I was able with God's help to manifest this in my life you know what I'm saying like um and to do it quickly you know to have a mind to do it and to execute you know that that's what's important here and that's the what I hope that I'm communicating um, through these videos and through the content that I upload is that it's not so much thinking about it and it's not so much about talking about it it's the action behind it so if there is something that you desire to do for yourself if there are dreams if there are aspirations that you have for yourself um, don't just talk about it be about it do it execute it and that's with anything so i'm so glad that i was able to execute on this um fairly quickly yes that's all that that's what this year and the next the next few years of my life is all going to be about executing whatever it is that I want to do execute it and I hope that you guys are doing the same you know pray about it you know talk to the man above about it once you and him get on the same page write it out dwell on it think about it eat live and breathe that thing until you're able to fully execute it it's important to do um and then you can always look back on things and um at least here in this space i'm able to um to look back on the things that i've once talked about and dreamed about and to actually see those things come to fruition full circle you know it's amazing it is amazing like i can't even tell you like tuesday is going to be uh it's going to be my grandmother's birthday april 27th um that's a blessing in itself but i remember probably about 10 or so years ago on my grandmother's birthday i if i could find the picture i'll insert it it's, it's on instagram actually right i'm gonna find that picture and i'm gonna show you guys it was on April 27th. I want to say it is years ago, years ago. And I posted a picture standing in front of a house. And where I said that I wanted this for myself, 
well, this is something that I want. I wanted a home. And wow, it, it's it's crazy. But I, we were standing, in, I rolled down and saw a for sale sign on this home. I stood in front of it, put my hand on the door, looked at it, walked around the house. <laughs> And then a couple of years later, I'm in my house. And when I look at the front of that house, and I look at the front of my house, similarities. So, it's, it's just crazy. But I'll, I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys. So, maybe I'll do a separate video and I'll talk all about that. If you want to see that video, thumbs up. Let, let me know. You don't have to type nothing. Just thumbs up the video and I'll do a separate video where I kind of talk about that amazing amazing testimony but yeah um, right now this video seems like it's gonna be long but I'm gonna chop it up for you so you don't have to sit and listen to me babble on but um, yeah I'll do a story time that's what I'll do yep I'll do that but yes, yeah, stay tuned because I am going to hopefully, if nothing, if no one derails my day, um, I will be uh, coming back and doing a, this will be a content day where I sit down and I put together some videos um, leading up to my surgery. So hopefully we'll be able to get that done. I wanna do some try-ons. I wanna try on some clothes today based on how my body looks today and then we'll be trying on some things post up as far as my weight guys i've not weighed myself um in maybe two weeks but the last time i weighed myself i was like 131 so and i've not been like going off the rails or anything with my eating so i'm sure that i'm i'm good but i will have an update for you um in the next video so peace out